हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू माय बिजनेस क्लॉस चैनल टुडे फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अप आईटीएक 2000 द क्वेश्चंस व्हिच हैव बीन फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क्ड इन द यू एग्जामिनेशंस एंड अदर एग्जामिनेशंस बिकॉज़ देयर आर अदर स्टूडेंट्स आल्सो हु स्टडी दिस आईटीएक सो आई विल टेक अप आईटीएक इन दिस वीडियो थ्री चैप्टर्स आई विल कवर द वेरी फर्स्ट चैप्टर अंडर द आईटीएक 2000 and the second will be uh, the digital signatures and the third will be e governance even you know bcom honor students in the semester 4 you know they study cyber crimes and laws paper even you know it act 2000 is useful for them also this video will be very useful for students of cyber crimes and laws studying bcom honors course uh, you know in the fourth semester so uh, questions and then how to answer these questions and some tips and tricks i will also be sharing with my dear students so the first chapter is friends introduction to it act scope and applications so you know what are the objectives of it act 2000 and then which are the areas or agreements or contracts to which it act is not applicable or that is which agreements contracts or areas have been excluded from the you know it act you know where it act is non applicable it act is not applicable and then there are three uh, there are key the definitions sometimes you know question is asked on definitions also explain the following terms as defined under the it act 2000 say computer computer virus computer system keys key pair private key public key then appropriate government cca cca stands for controller of certifying authorities then ca ca stands for certifying authority a judification electronic form so friends number of terms are there under the it act which have been defined under section 2 of the it act 2000 so you must uh, be knowing or because you are, you are tech savvy people you all know the uh, you know all these you all know these terms you know a lot computer computer virus all these terms whichever terms i have spoken so uh you know they, they are also uh, you know uh, given in the question paper moving ahead friends you know the first question very important question from the it act from the very first chapter is objectives of the it act 2000 you know there are various objectives of it act 2000 eight points are before you it doesn't mean you write only these eight points because question is of 12 to 14 marks just these eight points if you write you are not going to get marks just two three marks you will get and paper evaluator is not going to give you you know uh, good marks so the very first you have to explain also friends to grant legal liquidation to transactions carried out by means of edi and other means of communication Uh, commonly referred to as electronic commerce e-commerce online buying of selling online buying of you know goods and uh, you know also services services are also available online okay online buying and selling of goods so during this pandemic period also you know many of us you know bought goods online a younger generation you know they always like to buy the goods online with a lot of you know advantages are there you can save on your time just you know at the click of the mouse you can place a order and you know the delivery is also made at your doorstep so friends this was also one of the objectives you know of this enactment of the it act 2000 to give legal recognition to digital signature for authentication of any information Now, under the it act you know number of documents are sent by one person to another many certificates also we get on the uh, online 
digitally certificate so friends hand written signatures are not possible on the e documents so digital signatures are to be affixed otherwise you know how can we say the e document is authentic it will not be reliable if you know digital signatures are not affixed so you know the this was also one of the objectives of it act to give legal recognition to digital signature so uh, i will be uh, you know defining this digital signature and i'll also explain uh, how you know digital signatures are authenticated to facilitate the e filing of documents and e payments even documents are filed online okay and payment is also made online many times you know we find the payment is being made online upi there are various modes of payment digital payment okay paytm then through phone pay or upi through mobile banking there are so many modes of digital payment and documents are filed online admission process has gone online even degrees nowadays you know students are getting online digital degrees we may call them okay so uh, you know passports being renewed online llp registration company's registration all documents are filed online all forms have gone web based so friends you know there are number of documents which are being filed online gst income tax sales tax okay so uh, you know documents are being filed online and payments are also being made online to facilitate facilitate and give legal sanction to uh, uh, to uh, facilitate e storage of data in place of paper based methods now with the introduction of this information technology act you know everything is stored in the cpu so we do not require the space there is e storage of data we are having folders we are having files okay and then you know when in, in future we want to see the data we can always refer to our uh, relevant folder and we can have access to the data so gone are the days you know when uh, proper space was required for uh, compilation of paper based documents in the banks or anywhere in any office you know the almira used to be there where papers used to be kept in the folders or files but nowadays you know everything is being stored in cpu in folders and files to facilitate and give legal sanction to electronic transfer of funds between banks and financial institutions even you know this transfer is being uh, you know done uh, digitally electronic transfer of funds between banks and financial institutions to give legal recognition for keeping books books of accounts in electronic form even the books of accounts by all the institutions are being maintained in the electronic form on computer you know at the click of the mouse the uh, bank employee can check our balance earlier you know uh, and before this enactment of information technology act 2000 you know when we used to go to the bank to deposit money to withdraw money then the concerned bank employee used to see the ledger and just see how much balance is there in the account of the customer and if he found that sufficient balance is there he used to permit us the withdrawal but now at the click of the mouse you uh, the employee will tell you that how much balance is there in your account so that you can withdraw your money from the bank to create civil and criminal liabilities for contravention of various provisions of the it act it act does not permit for contravention of various provisions there are so many provisions which have been contained under the it act regarding digital signature manner of digital signature then uh, there are so many uh, offenses also cyber terrorism okay so cyber uh, cyber so many cyber crimes are there punishment has been provided for them civil liabilities as well as criminal liabilities are there and whoever has contravened the provisions of the act who will find out 
how can we find out the provisions of the it act have been contravened for this you know its it act has established a machinery which is in the form of adjudication adjudicating officer will see to it whether you know the person has contravened the provisions of it act or not so there are certain factors which are to be kept in mind by the ao adjudicating officer while you know deciding this how much punishment should be given to the wrong doer or the person who is the defaulter who has contravened the various provisions of the act what punishment should be given and how much reward should be announced to amend the indian penal code there is a bank of india act indian evidence act so you know even you know whenever any amendment takes place in the it act 2000 these acts are also amended ipc 1860 then reserve bank of india 1934 and indian evidence act 1872 so friends just i would like to repeat that uh, just writing these eight points will not fetch you good marks you have to write these eight points along with the explanation also okay so uh, moving ahead the next question is non applicability of the app there are certain documents you know where this it act is not applicable a negotiable instrument other than a check as defined in section 13 of nia 1881 it act is applicable to check but it is not applicable to bill of exchange promissory note because these are the other negotiable instruments which have been defined under section 13 in other words the it act is applicable to check which i have told you just now in order to facilitate e payments the power of attorney poa as defined in section 1a of power of attorney act even to power of attorney whenever you know advocate uh, uh, you know fights on behalf of the client then in that case he always attaches the power of attorney even to power of attorney this id act is not applicable a trust as defined in section 3 of the indian trust act 1882 even it act is not applicable to trust a will as defined in clause h of section 2 of the indian succession act 1925 including testamentary disposition even to will say father has to write the will in favor of sons in favor of any other person okay then in that case friends you know even this will cannot be digitally signed because handwritten signatures are required on the bill any contract for the sale or conveyance of immovable property where property has to be sold immovable property has to be purchased or it has to be sold then also you know both the parties will have to go to the court and get these documents registered in document or transaction notified by the central government in official gazette any document apart from these five points any document any transaction which is notified by the central government in the official gazette even to that this act will not apply now the question arises you know what are the reasons why these agreements documents have been excluded from the purview of the it act friends there are two reasons for this first reason is these documents can be authenticated only by the handwritten signatures and the second reason is these documents require fulfillment of certain registration formalities so friends i have explained you know uh, the various points six points under the heading non applicability of the act otherwise you know the it act is applicable to the whole of india including the state of jammu and kashmir the second chapter is digital signatures three questions are very important from this chapter which have been asked in the previous a papers a uh, definition and uses of digital signature authentication of electronic record or creation and verification of digital signature then distinguish between private key and the public key distinguish between digital signature and electronic signature 
so first of all i would like to distinguish between private key and the public key private key and public key these are the keys of the key payer private key is private it is you know kept by the subscriber subscriber is the owner of private key it is always used to create digital signature and private key is not listed in the digital signature certificate public key is the key of the key pair which is used to verify digital signature it is listed in the digital signature certificate and it is non secret key and it is widely known to the public so friends there are three points of distinction one is the nature which one is private which one is non private public key okay so secret key and non secret key each key performs different function there is a second point basis of distinction one is used to create digital signature the second one is used to verify digital signature private key is not listed in the digital signature certificate whereas public key is listed in the digital signature certificate now one of the questions was you know define the term digital signature and what are the uses of digital signature digital signature has been defined under section 21 p of the it act 2000 digital signature means authentication of any electronic record by subscriber by means of an electronic method in accordance with the provisions of section 3 of the act subscriber is a person in whose favor digital signature certificate is issued so there are three uses of digital signature authenticity of the originator it always tells us that originator is authentic originator is the person who has sent the document transmitted the document created the document and the person to whom the document is sent is known as addressee authenticity of the document document is also authentic this is another use of digital signature non repudiation any person who has sent the doc- document owns up some responsibility he cannot deny from the fact later on that this document was not sent by me so these three are the uses of digital signature now authentication of digital signature this is a very important question friends you know how are digital signature authenticated or which are the various steps in the creation and verification of digital signature there are six steps here first is preparation of message application of hash function encryption of message digest attachment of digital signature sending of digital signature and encrypted message and the last one is verification so there are three six steps in the creation and verification of digital signature so a uh, question is asked on authentication of digital signature how are they authenticated or you know steps in the process of creation and verification of digital signature you have to write all these six points along with the diagram also diagram regarding showing process of you know uh, authentication of digital signature so first of all friends you know message has to be prepared which message the originator would like to send it to the Uh, originate uh, address see other person sender and recipient which message the trans uh, the sender would like to send it to the recipient you will have to select this message and then you will have to apply hash function as nothing but the application of the software software has to be applied so plain text is converted into the uh, cipher text okay uh, you know which is known as message digest and then digital signature is attached with the message digest so plain text cipher text and encrypted text along with the uh, digital signature appended all are sent to the recipient and now the recipient has got plain text cipher text and then apart from that you know he is also having the public key with the help of public key you know he will also do the same he will also convert the 
plain text in, into the you know encrypted message and see to it the uh, encrypt, uh, encrypted message which he has got and which he has created if he finds both are identical it means digital signatures are intact they have not been tampered on the way in transit this is the way how digital signatures are verified so friends you will have to explain the diagram also digital signature device how digital signature works a is the sender here use a is private key to sign the document transmit via the internet verify that the signature by a is public key no sign when signatures are verified then you know uh, public key of the sender that is used which is there uh, stored at the directory user b he received the document with signature attached so he will also use the hash function he will also find the encrypted message he will compare both and if he finds that both are intact it means the digital signature have not been tampered or modified in transit this is how you know the digital signatures are authenticated now electronic signature electronic signature is a term which was in- inserted by itaa 2008 ITAA stands for Information Technology Amendment Act 2008 Difference between digital signature and electronic signature one has been defined under section 21p other has been defined under section 21t of IT Act 2000 So friends you know there are points of differences between the two scope of electronic signature is wider it is an electronic signature digital signature is electronic signature so electronic signature is broader term it is not necessarily a digital signature every digital signature is electronic signature but every electronic signature is not digital signature it offers more security than traditional electronic signature it is lesser secure which is lesser secure electronic signature is lesser secure than international standards digital signature has but es is not regulated so much as a vendor has to make his own standards then the first one digital signature cannot be tampered altered or copied but electronic signature can be copied or tampered with so these are the five points of distinction between digital signature and electronic signature now e governance this is third chapter under the it act 2000 now these two questions are asked uh, one of these uh, questions no these questions are the same only the wording is different answer will be the same provisions which facilitate facilitate strengthen or e governance e governance is smart governance explain the provisions which promote e governance what is e governance how does it act 2000 facilitate e governance e governance is smart governance smart s stands for simple m for moral e is accountable r is responsive and t stands for transparent government so friends they are now i'll take up this answer for this question e governance or electronic governance is the application of ict for delivering government services exchange of information communication transactions integration of various stand alone systems and services the three main target groups are government citizens and the business or interest groups so friends uh, uh, the provisions which uh, strengthen or promote e governance they have been provided under section 4 to 10 of the it act 2000 i'll take up all these points one by one first one is legal recognition of electronic records you know paper based records electronic records you know one of the objective of uh, e governance or even enactment of it act 2000 was to give legal recognition to the electronic signature 
because we do talk about electronic records nowadays so you know that they have been recognized legally recognized not only paper based records but electronic records er has been legally recognized the iti 2000 aims to provide the legal framework under which legal entity is recorded accorded to all electronic records and other activities so uh, if it is accessible uh, to the user for subsequent reference and it is rendered or made available in electronic form then only we'll say that you know that they have been legally recognized legal recognition of electronic signature even you know electronic electronic signature have been legally recognized and er is the term which was inserted by itaa 2008 use of electronic record and digital signatures in the government and its agencies so you know friends elect er they are and ds they are being used in the government offices and its agencies any license permit sanction approval by whatever name called in a particular and licenses certificates admission tickets admit cards okay all are being issued online they are being provided to the uh, concerned parties digitally okay so receipt or payment of money in a particular manner not with understanding anything contained in any other law for the time being in force so friends uh, delivery of services by service provider this was also inserted by rta this section gives the authority to the central government as well as the state government to authorize service providers and these service providers friends they may be uh, individual person private agency private company partnership firm sole proprietorship firm or any such other body or agency which has been granted permission by the appropriate government appropriate government may be the state government or the central government even the scale of services you know may be specified by the appropriate government retention of electronic records as yes, paper based records are retained similarly friends you know section 7 provides that electronic records should also be retained so that you know in future period if anybody wants to have reference to the er then you know one can always have the reference to the er the information contained therein remains accessible so as to be usable for a subsequent reference this is what i have mentioned just now er is retained in the format in which it was originally generated sent or received or in a format which can be demonstrated to represent accurately the information originally generated sent or received nothing will be changed in the same format it will remain the details which will fa- facilitate the identification of the origin destination date and time of dispatch or receipt of such electronic record are available in the electronic record so friends uh, so er should also be retained then audit of documents records maintained in the electronic form even these documents which are being maintained in the electronic form they must be audited okay and then publication of rules regulations and notification in the official gazette how can we say that they have been published in the official gazette when they are available in the electronic form and now you know we are having in, instead of paper based gazette we are having e gazette documents are there e gazette many time you know when uh, amendments take place amendment in any act take place then all these amendments are there in the e form electronic form section 6 7 and 8 not to confer right to insist document should be accepted in electronic form so uh, it doesn't mean friends that uh, uh, paper based documents have been 100% replaced by electronic documents still you know the hard copies are being accepted people are going to the offices and getting the work done it is not there everything is being done online power to make rules by the central government in respect of digital signature 
central government has a power to a uh, you know frame rules in respect of digital signature what type of digital signature should be used what is the manner format in which the digital signature will be affixed the manner procedure which uh, you know uh, for the identification of the person affixing the digital signature how the person will be identified control processes and procedures to ensure adequate integrity security and the uh, confidentiality of er or payments any other matter which is necessary to give legal effect to the digital signature all these rules are to be you know framed by the central government then validity of contracts formed through electronic means so you know we are also having e contract e contract paper based contract even this uh, was introduced by ita this point number 10 under section 10a so where in a contract formation the communication acceptance revocation of proposals acceptance are expressed in electronic form or by means of electronic record such contract shall not be deemed to be unenforceable so e contract is as good as the paper based contract both are enforceable so friends this is all about the various provisions which promote or strengthen e governance under the it act 2000 so friends it is all from my side all important questions i have discussed with their answers do like my videos do press on the bell icon so that you can get notifications of my future videos so do subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet so friends uh, stay happy and stay blessed always all the best to all of you for your examinations we'll meet soon okay friends goodbye